What's up YouTube? What's going on guys? So uh, the other day when I posted the upper body movement preparation video, a lot of people requested that I do it for the lower body. So that's why I'm doing it. Uh, that's what I'm doing today. Excuse the chalky, messy look. I just got back from the gym and uh, also excuse the shadowing. I'm having to blind myself with this really bright light because it's nighttime so you guys can read what I'm writing here on this board. So movement preparation, lower body. Uh, I really want to explain a little bit further certain things that would help you guys out with your own movement preparation templates. So I wrote out what I did up here and I'll be showing you the videos of that as well, but also some tips that I think you guys need to know and understand for uh, designing the best movement prep for you. So let's just get right into it. Like I said, there's always going to be three tiers that I really focus on for my movement preparation. That is mobility work, stability work, and activation. Okay, the mobility work is always going to be the things that help you loosen up and get into position when you have a muscle that is neurologically tight. Uh, stability is what gives you that uh, stability and end ranges of motion. I have a whole series on this and why that's important, but it helps prevent that tightness from coming back. And then the activation is what gets those kind of more dormant muscle groups activated and turned on so they are being tensioned properly in movement patterns. Um, so starting with mobility, what I uh, always start with on my lower body days, as of lately, is uh, rectus femoris rolling. So you see me here just grabbing a lacrosse ball and digging into this muscle group that's part of the quads called the rectus femoris. It's basically uh, the main large uh, quad muscle that runs from the hip down to the knee. It is biarticular, bi meaning it attaches uh, both at the hip joints and the knee joints. And this one gets in particularly really tight and hypertonic in a lot of people and is um, kind of surrounds some of the knee pain and issues that we deal with. Now, rolling this out isn't a long-term fix for knee pain. You have to fix that through other modalities, but as a quick fix, this one helps loosen up my hips a little bit, uh, but two, it, it kind of releases some of the knee tendinopathy that I've been dealing with. Um, so I've really been focusing on this lately. Now, whether or not that release is coming from perception change or uh, neurological effects or, or what it is, it doesn't really matter. This just makes me feel better. So like I, I did in my foam rolling video, I, I kind of stated that even though foam rolling doesn't change anything long term, it still has a use if you are uh, feeling kind of beat up in the gym, stuff's feeling tight, your muscles are, are hurting or it hurts again in certain positions. If you can get rid of that pain or get rid of that sensation with a little quick bit of rolling, that's a good thing, right? That's going to help you move better and not think about that. So that's kind of my quick fix for loosening up my hip as well as getting rid of some of that tendinopathy uh, feeling that I'm getting in the hole of a squat. The second thing I do is uh, some hip flexion with a banded um, or a posterior pole from a band. So you'll see me here in this video, I'm just bending over and, and I'm trying to mobilize into the position I'm going to be in. So like when I'm deadlifting after squats, I really want a neutral back. So I'm not just bending at my waist and folding over and letting my back roll round over. I'm really trying to focus on deep hip flexion with a very neutral back because when I get down to pick up that deadlift bar, I want to be able to um, be in a good position to do that. If you mobilize into positions with a round back you'll be really good at getting into positions with a rounded back now again stretching and uh, banded traction work the data is pretty clear on it there is no long-term change with this stuff but when you're tight especially as a power lifter who's going into the gym and training at pretty maximal loads uh, very often it's really easy to get tight the next recurring sessions after that and so this is something I like doing on my lower body days that really helps loosen me up and get into that deep hip flexion position especially being so lanky it's kind of harder for me to get into those positions so I like doing this to loosen that up and that's really all the mobility I do so I'm not some mobility guru I know I don't like overstress mobility but when there's a reason to, to doing something it makes sense to throw some stuff in there to feel and move a little bit better I don't roll every muscle group on my body before every training session. I don't stretch everything out. I stretch and roll the things that really matter to me. Um, so that's the mobility work. Now the stability work, uh, you'll see, you'll have seen this before. I only do one thing, but it takes care of like 10 different things in one. And that's the lunge sequence that um, Jordan had me do when I was dealing with some hip issues. Uh, you, so this is a lot of movements in one. Basically I go into a lunge and then from the lunge I go into a uh, standing hip march where the leg that is up, the hip that is flexed, I'm really trying to jam that hip into high uh, hip flexion and activate my hip flexor. And then the leg that's planted down that's straight, I'm trying to squeeze that glute on extremely hard. And that's going to help, one, align my pelvis a little bit, but two, it gets um, that, that glute muscle to fire. Uh, and so it's kind of like an activation along with a stability drill because you are on one leg and balancing. You might notice when you first do this, you can't feel it in your glutes or you can't get the other leg up. 
those are big signs that you probably should be doing that. So that little portion, the hip march, is really important. And then from there, I go down into a hip airplane. So I do first a single limb Romanian deadlift, and then I airplane out. And what this does is it allows me to activate my glute med and minimus uh, from doing that airplane motion. So it's kind of a external rotation at the hip joints while being uh, on a, um, or being in a position that is unstable. So it really fights and forces me to resist force, which is getting that stability work in that I talked about in those other videos, which helps prevent tightness from coming. And this is also like kind of a dynamic movement warm up to where it just gets my muscles moving and stretching out and feeling good. So that's really the overall sequence. It's a lunge to the hip march with the hip flexion into the uh, single limb RDL with the hip airplane. So um, that is the stability that at work I do and that's the only stuff I do on my lower body days. Now finally for activation, what I do is um, some side plank clamshells for the first thing. And this is really focused on um, getting my glutes to activate. This is something my girlfriend showed me that is I'm gonna incorporate I think probably forever because I have issues with getting my glutes activated evenly on both sides. And by getting into this position, it forces one leg to do some active rotation. So the top leg is actively rotating out as you squeeze your glutes through. And the bottom leg is having to maintain an isometric contraction to uh, get the, the knee out and, and rotate that hip out. And then when you flip over to the other side, the same thing's going on. So what's important to understand is you want to do both sides evenly and you want to get into a position where your um, glutes are squeezed through and your pelvis is nice and aligned. So you notice when I'm doing this, my body's like a straight line from knee all the way up into my head. I don't have any uh, bend in my hips at all. Everything's pushing through, so my glutes are squeezing through and I'm really contracting the glutes as hard as I can and I'm opening those knees out. Now, some people might feel this more keeping the knees a little less out. I'm just very externally rotated in my natural anatomy. So you got to play with this one a little bit and find the right position uh, for you. But what you want to focus on is squeezing the glutes, rotating the knee out at least a little bit, and, and really just feeling a contraction in the glutes overall and doing both sides evenly. If you feel a discrepancy from one side to the other, that tells you you probably have an imbalance in activation or something going on. Uh, the next thing I do is a wall squat, and I purposely do this after the glute activation. Um, so what I'm doing here is basically just going down into a squat position using a wall to assist me in a completely upright position. And this helps clear up um, a ton of space in my hip capsule and work into a new position. So something I'm trying to do personally is widen my squat stance back out to where it used to be. Over the year, the last year or so, I've kind of narrowed my squat stance due to some mobility issues. And now that I'm feeling a little bit better, I'm trying to widen it again. But just getting under the bar for me and, and going wider really hurts my hips. And this is actually something that one, by being in that upright torso position, helps clear some room in my hip capsule so I can get into that deeper, wider position. And then from there, I budge forward off of the wall into that um, true like squat position. And so this kind of helps mobilize me into the position I'm trying to get into before I get on the bar. It makes everything feel a lot better. And today when I was actually able to squat and do some tempo work that I had planned, uh, it felt so much better than just hopping onto the bar. Uh, this also serves as like a core activation um, slash uh, pelvis control uh, exercise, but that's a little complicated for this video. The main purpose I'm doing this is to just actually move in the squat pattern and, and feel good. Um, the last thing I do, uh, which a lot of people aren't going to understand, but it's a rotation pull-up. And a lot of people will say, why are you doing that on low, uh, a lower body day? The reason why I'm doing this, and you'll notice I jam really hard into internal rotation in the bottom position of the pull-up, and then I... I force my shoulders to try to externally rotate and to press down. So I'm trying to take my shoulders and crank them back and down and really get my chest broad. So I go from a very internally rotated position to a depressed and externally rotated position with the shoulders. And this helps activate my lats a lot and get my shoulder griddle where it needs to be for when I squat. When we squat, we need a good shoulder rotation and rack position, especially if you are a low bar squatter. And this helps me achieve that. So this is actually something I do on my lower body days, even though that would seem counterintuitive because it's an upper body movement. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. What I want to talk about though more than everything today are the tips. This is really going to be big in helping you set up your own uh, movement preparation and understanding why I do some of the things I do and why you should do some of the things you do. Um, so the first thing is the program should evolve over time. This is not what I was doing a year ago. Your mobility needs, stability needs, activation issues, they're going to change as your leverages change, as you get bigger and stronger, um, as you start dealing with more or, or different chronic uh, positions that you might be in during the day. If you go from uh, being a waitress on your feet all day to a, a, a desk um, 
employee and you're sitting down, the, the things that are going to get tight on you are going to change. And also, um, just the way you squat and move, your technique is going to be altered over time. You're going to start noticing some different things happening in your body where you might need a different kind of mobility drill or stability drill to kind of fix certain issues you have flare up. So it's important to understand your program is always going to change and evolve over time. The second thing I want you to understand is order of the drills matter. So I purposely start with mobility first because that allows me to get into the positions without any of those sensations of pain or tightness that I might be dealing with. From there, I work on stability because once I can get into those deeper ranges of motion, I want to stabilize them. And then lastly, we work on activation and get more specific. Things like the wall squats or if I'm doing like tempo work on the bar, something like that's going to be very specific to activation and, and actually lifting as where this stuff is helping you get to that point. So the order uh, that you do your movement preparation in highly matters. And I always try to say... It, it, it really depends on the situation, so I don't want to blanket statement this, but usually speaking, mobility is going to come first, then stability, and then lastly, activation slash actual movement stuff, like things with the bar itself. Um, third rule, specify movement prep to you. I said this in the other one, I'm going to say it again to reiterate, your movement is very specific to you. In fact, it's more specific probably than your programming, your nutrition, everything. Everyone moves completely different. This idea of universal cues or um, universal movements, that we should all be moving the same way, that everyone's going to squat the same way, that's just not true at all. Uh, we don't use the same cues when we lift. We don't feel things the same way. You ask someone where they feel squat and then ask 10 other people and you're going to get 10 different answers. So you have to specify your movement preparation to you and understand your body. And that's where learning this stuff is really going to come into play. Watching my videos, watching other, um, uh, like Jordan Shallow is a really good resource for this. Other mobility, stability, like I don't want to say gurus, but people out there who are posting this information, it's really important to understand the way the body works and then learn how to apply certain drills to fix issues you might have. Um, so specify movement prep to you. Number four, dysfunctional movement can't be fixed by more movement. There has been um, this new trend of people saying, don't like do any kind of mobility or stability or activation drills, just get under the bar and start working out because that's so specific to lifting. I couldn't disagree with this more. If you have dysfunctional movement and you're shifting in your squats, just trying to mentally fix that by like centering your hips or whatever, you're, it's only going to go so far. If you're a very strong person already, especially, you're not going to be able to fix dysfunctional movement by just moving more in those same patterns. You're just going to re-ingrain like worse habits. And I see people who preach this a lot. Like some of the people who preach that are, are people who move the worst. So you do not want to just try to move more. Like I hear a lot of people preaching the last couple of weeks and, and months that I've been on YouTube and stuff. It's been a trend growing that people are saying just get under the bar and start squatting. Well, I do agree with the idea that like getting under a bar and just doing a lot of reps will help really prepare you to squat or do whatever you're doing. I disagree with the fact that if you're dealing with dysfunction or like certain things are causing bad movement or whatever, that you just need to squat more or deadlift more or whatever it is. You need to fix that dysfunction by doing these things. Okay, so dysfunctional movement cannot be fixed by more movement. I totally 100% uh, agree with that and, and back that. Um, do stability other times. So this stability stuff, I do it after my workouts too. And I'll tend to usually do it like weighted or challenge myself a little bit. Before lifting, I don't want to like exert myself too hard. But there is some uh, thought to doing stability on your off days and, and things of that nature. It'll just help keep you loose. Uh, daily movement is huge for fixing like a lot of problems people are dealing with. The reason why kids are so mobile and like older people are so not, it has nothing to do with aging or, or any of that stuff really. I mean, some of that comes into play. It mostly comes down to movement. Kids are all on the floor moving around, playing. They're in different ranges of motion all the time and they stay loose because of that because they're just moving. As we get older, we start sitting at a desk all day long, like in class or at work or whatever. We start driving a lot. We start doing a lot of repetitive movement. We don't play around on the floor as much. We're not in these positions. So I can't stress enough how important daily movement is, but to make it specific, I would just do a lot of stability work. So like a lot of like end range of motion stabilization drills and things like that are really gonna help loosen up your body, make it feel better and just function better as a whole. Now lastly, um, the gold is safe technically sound optimal movement. I hear people butcher the idea of what movement preparation is. Some people say it's just to make you, you move your best. Other people say it's to make you move the safest. It's kind of all those things. You want safe movement, you want technically sound movement, and you want optimal movement in the sense of like strength, force output, stuff like that. So 
If your movement preparation is only doing one of those, you need to readdress it and, and make sure it's, it's helping you be safe, it's helping you be optimal, and it's helping um, work on like technique things with the big three or, or whatever exercises you're training with. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. I want to keep this video a little bit shorter and more condensed. I probably failed it that miserably. I have no clue how long it's been filming. But uh, give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave some comments down below if you have any questions. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.